Hey, welcome back to the shop. So you want to learn how to use this guy right here, huh? And I'm hoping this is in the camera and it's focused. Pretty straightforward. A 3 16 radius roundover bit. I'm using the white side 1570 here. It's a pointed roundover. And we're going to use this on the CNC to do things like this. So where do we begin? Well, I wanted to confirm that the distance from that point to the outside of that radius, or the top of the radius, was actually 3 16 of an inch. So I took a Miles Craft Exactor, I'm not sponsored at this point, I was at one point, and I said, if I lay that against the base of this, and I take the edge of the scale, and I line it up right with the edge of that radius, what do I get? It just so happens, if that'll bring that into the camera, I get exactly 3 16ths of an inch. So that tells me the depth that I need to go to achieve that radius. Let's get on CarveCo and let me show you how we put this in the system. All right, to begin with, we're going to open up Maker and Maker Plus. It'll work in both programs, both forms of those programs. We're going to go to New Model and we're going to use a dimension of 20 by 20. That doesn't matter. I just need a work surface so that I can show you how to do this. We're going to work in inches. I'm going to put the origin in the bottom left. Again, not necessary to be concerned about it in this instance because I'm just doing this to show you how to program for the roundover. So click OK. It'll open in the 3D view, which it did. Let's switch to the 2D view. And let's make some shapes here. So we'll go with a square. It's, it's easily, easily done. We'll push Enter to put it on the work surface, or you can click Create. Now I want to show you both outside and inside, so we'll make another square here. Let's go something like this. And as I said, you can click on Create to create it or push Enter. Let's go back to the cursor tool, which closes out the other menu. All right, so we, in a sense here, we have basically a tray that we're going to make, and we want to put a roundover on the outside edge of this line and a roundover on the inside edge of this line. We're going to remove this material in the center down to a given dimension or perhaps we're making a picture frame and we're going to cut this out completely. So let's begin. <clears throat> now if you look at your pointed roundover bit, the point on the end of it is actually not a point. It has a flat. So if you want to remove any line that that flat will create when it starts cutting so you don't have to sand it off, you have to create an offset. And again, this is how I do this. I'm sure there's other ways that it can be done. Layton from CarveCo can probably enter a offset number or etc. And it'll take care of it for you. But this is the way that I do it. I find it just simpler to do it this way. And by that I mean, let's click on the vector for the inside. We'll begin with that one. And we're going to generate an offset. So we'll go to the offset tool right here. And we're going to offset inward in this case. And what we need to do is measure the tip, the flat on the tip of that pointed roundover, and find out how wide it is. On the white side, 1570, it's 0.03 wide, roughly. I mean, I'm going to get as close as I can. And I'm going to divide that by 2, which is 0.015. As you can see here, that is going to be my offset, 0.015 inward. We're going to click OK after we have sharp corners. I do not want to delete the vectors. I want to select the resulting offset, though. So we'll click Offset, and it moves so small that you almost can't see it. Let's click off of the vectors, and I'll zoom in to prove to you that there is indeed two lines. Now when we set up the toolpath for the pointed roundover, we're going to choose the inside line. If we were going to cut this loose, we would choose the outside line to remove the material. We're not going to do that on this one. We're going to go to the outside line of our tray and we're going to offset again and in this case we're going to offset outward the same distance 0.015 and we're going to click offset and as you can see it popped one in there if I move way in you can see it we'll go back to the cursor tool <clears throat> pardon me now so let's begin with the outside line we're going to click on the outside line to create the roundover on the outside of our tray Go to Profile Toolpath. In each instance with the pointed roundover, it's a follow along toolpath. So we need to change the tool strategy here to along. We're going to go down to a start depth of zero. Our finish depth is, if 
by the measurement that I took in the beginning of the video, 3 sixteenths of an inch. So that is 0.1875. We'll enter that here, 0.1875. Scrolling down, we're going to select a tool. I'm going to go through our tool menu here until I go down and I find the plunge point round over 3 sixteenths of an inch. I haven't loaded the white side 1570 in here. This one will work for this example. So we'll select that. And as you can see here, it looks pointed, but it has a flat right there. So we need to measure from there to there to determine the offset, as I said earlier. I've already done that. We're not going to bother doing it now. Select the tool. We don't need any bridges. We don't need any tabs. We need to define the material. In this case, let's use 0.75 and click OK. Let's give it a name. We'll call it Outside Round and calculate now. That will put the round over on the outside of this stock. Let's close this menu out. Let's zoom in so that we can make sure we get the right line. We want the inside line on the inside of the stock. This one right here. Let's zoom in and make sure. See, we have the inside. Again, we're going to go to Profile Toolpath. Again, we're going to do an Along Strategy. Start Depth to Zero. Again, the Finish Depth is 0 0.1875. 875. That is the depth of the bit. We're going to go down through and we're going to select a bit again. Pointed round over 3 16 We'll select that. Continuing down again, no bridges or tabs. Let's call this outside round over, or outside round for short. <clears throat> Pardon me. Calculate now. Let's close this out. Let's zoom back out a little bit. I'll move this to the center. Now I'm moving that around by holding down both mouth keys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the toolpath that will cut this tray loose so that I can show you how nice and smooth it is. So we'll zoom in. And in this case, if you remember, the actual dimension of our box that we wanted was the inside vector, not the outside. The outside was used simply for the round over offset. So we're going to choose the inside vector, again going to the profile toolpath. Our start depth will be zero. Because we want to cut it loose, our finish depth is 0.75. Let's use a quarter inch downtown Jenny in this case. Select that. Scrolling down, I'm not going to put any bridges or tabs in here. I'm going to use two-sided tape or a vacuum hold down or whatever I can so that I don't have to use tabs. I've been using onion peels a lot lately so that I don't ruin my wasteboard. And that'll be another video that comes out soon. Rules of the wasteboard is what I'm going to title that one. <clears throat> uh, material thickness is 75. We don't need to change any of that. Let's call this cut loose. And let's calculate now. Close out this toolpath, zooming back out. Let's simulate everything so we can see what this looks like. We'll go to toolpaths, we'll right click right here, scrolling down to simulate. Let's do them all, simulate. And as you can see now, if I zoom in, I have a nice round over right here. Let me rotate a little bit. There's no line along the edge where the bit has cut in and created that false line that I don't want. Everything looks good there. On the inside one, I have the same thing. It's a nice inside round over with no line. And let's back out just a little bit. We'll click this box to center it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this outside waste material so we can get a better look at that. So we'll go to simulation. We'll go down here to these two and we'll click them. I have delete to picked material. So if I pick this outside, I can delete this by clicking on it. And as you can see, it disappears. Pushing down on the center mouse wheel, I can rotate. I can zoom in a little bit so that you can see that it's a nice round over with no line running down the edge of the wood. Now what I can do, <clears throat> we'll put this back in the middle. I'll close out this menu. Let's delete the simulation. Now simulation is highlighted so I can delete this garbage can. Everything disappears. Don't panic. Push this and the vectors will come back. Let's switch back to the 2D view. Now let's remove this center so that I can show you that it'll be a nice round over there. 
Again, remembering that we put an offset on the inside so that we could create the round over without the mark, we want to select the outside vector, go to tool paths, going down again, start depth is zero. In this case, our strategy will be inside because I'm cutting inside and I want to remain on that line. Scrolling down, obviously our finish depth will be 0.75 and we'll call this inside loose. Loose is two O's. <clears throat> Calculate now. Oops, I forgot to select a tool. Let's go back up and select a quarter inch Jenny. Select. I bet it'll calculate now. It did. Close this out. Right click on tool paths. Let's simulate again. Alright, now if we scroll in, you can see that we have a nice round over on the inside, as I said. A nice round over on the outside, as I said. Let's go back to simulation over here and click on this. We'll go to here. Let's delete the picked material. We'll delete that and let's delete that. And as you can see now, we have a nice round over on each edge. Let's close this out. Click on simulation. Let's change it to a nicer looking default. Click on simulation default. Scroll all the way down to where the woods are down here and let's choose this wood right there. Now you can get a better look and you can see that we have a very nice round over with no line running here and no line running there where the bit chewed into the edge of the wood. Bringing it back to the center with this box. Pretty nice offset picture frame here. If it was sitting say like this, because you always make your picture frames a little heavier on the bottom, that's not true. So there you have it, a pointed roundover bit. That's how you use this crazy thing. Now, in some cases, it would be much quicker just to take the stock off and put this in your handheld trim router and go around it. But some cases, if you have a con complicated tool path, you might want to use this to get it absolutely perfect. So there you have it, pointed roundover bit. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. As always, give us a like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.